I'm on a boat. 150, 160, he's gone. What's up everybody? This is the introductory episode to my boat build. I recently purchased this uh, 1997 Supervision 21 foot uh, ski boat. It is a direct drive boat and actually the camera is sitting on the, uh, the engine hump. And I paid a pittance for this boat like I do with all my projects, but uh, just like all my other projects it needs a ton of work. I've already started doing a little few things off camera. I think I got it running pretty reliably now. Um, there's a few major, major issues with the boat. Major issue number one, you can't see right now, but I'll take you guys around in a second, is this trailer somehow made it home three hours here to Austin, Texas, but it is entirely rusted out. Like, not surface rusted out, but the trailer was from, like, almost down on the coast. The boat wasn't, but the trailer was. And so it is about as decrepit as, as you can imagine. In reality, fixing this trailer is almost impossible so I'm gonna end up securing another trailer uh, you know the tires on this thing you can put a hand like through the cracks in the sidewall from the dry rot uh, but hey you know I should not knock it and made it all the way home is a little scary at times but uh, she made it the second biggest thing is maybe you can see is this interior needs work a lot of work all this vinyl is dried out and cracked there's uh, critters that have helped themselves to some of this foam. Um, and <clears throat> I have found a guy here locally in Austin that used to be a professional upholsterer. It's retired now, does a little business on the side. And he and I have come to a financial understanding, and uh, we're going to have most of this interior redone by him. And so this is going to have a whole new interior in it, pretty much. And those are the two major things, the interior and the trailer. And I'm going to address those over the next couple of weeks. Um, but there is a quite a long to-do list. I have my little cheat sheet here. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Um, when you buy something like this, especially an older ski boat, you really got to go through and make sure all the mechanicals are good. It's really what you're paying for. Uh, obviously, you want to make sure the hull's not cracked or anything like that. But uh, visual inspection underneath will, will tell you what you need to know. But uh, things we need to do... Obviously an oil change and a new oil filter. I picked uh, up the stuff for that. With these engines, I got the engine in here in the middle. You need a uh, vacuum uh, oil tool that basically sucks all the oil out because uh, there's not a way to drain it really from the bottom. Um, and so I'll show you guys that in a future episode. Uh, we need to, this has a PCM 350 uh, or 5.7 liter PCM engine, which is basically a marine Chevy 350. Uh, that's a whole nother ball game because there's a lot of part numbers for PCM that don't interchange uh, with GM and boat things are way more expensive uh, and so it's kind of a, a, a hit and miss with what you can buy at your local auto zone and what you have to order online. So we're going to rebuild the Rochester fuel injection. It's uh, got the two barrel TBI on top uh, and when I say rebuild hopefully uh, some new gaskets. I mean it works fine now but it needs a really good cleaning sticks a little bit uh, probably not making the power it could uh, we've got a new flame arrestor on order um, we're going to replace the thermostat because the water uh, temperature gauge doesn't work which kind of leads me to believe that maybe the thermostat stuck open um, the oil pressure gauge doesn't work I replaced the oil sending unit uh, but that didn't fix it so there's something going on under the dash as well uh, so need to put in new spark plugs everything needs good cleaning new uh, fuel water separator and fuel filter I'm going to put a new belt on it um, as far as the electronics are concerned uh, I need to do some stuff under the dash I've already started fixing a lot of it we had an intermittent starter issue due to bad grounds and so I think I fixed that and I'll fire the boat up for you guys here in a second but uh, we're going to put in a new bluetooth head unit um, so I can sync my phone up with it, uh, we're going to put in new speakers. This boat's got four six-inch speakers, and the tower is actually wired uh, for pods. Uh, I don't have any pods, but the tower is wired for it. We're probably going to maybe cobble together a uh, subwoofer system for the boat as well, eventually. Uh, we need to clean up all the wiring, and I like to install a second battery. Uh, the other thing is, when I get the other trailer, it won't be perfect for this boat, so I'll probably have to modify the trailer, so that'll be another episode as well. But basically, so what I've done so far is I replaced the oil sending unit. I uh, 
rebuilt the starter, took everything apart, cleaned it out, and I think I fixed all the starting issues. So I'm going to grab the key to this thing and see if I can fire it up for you guys real quick. So there's our, uh, our PCM 5.7 liter 350. As you can see, it's basically just a Chevy 350. That's set up for marine use. Um, and we're going to see if we can get it started. earlier and there's our starter and solenoid that I had to go through and clean and rebuild but uh, if I take this off you can see what I was talking about this uh, Rochester two barrel injection is basically like a carburetor if you guys remember my Corvette video it's very similar to the crossfire injection that I had I ordered new gaskets for here and here so I can take this all off and clean it and we're gonna we're gonna do that at a minimum uh, and see what else we can get cleaned up. But uh, she actually runs pretty good. You know, idles really well. I uh, need an oil change. I'm hearing a little bit of a of a tick, and we'll we'll check out the valves uh, later on. Basically, just go all over this engine the best we can. Well, the first thing on today's maintenance agenda is to go through and replace all these spark plugs. While it may look a little awkward, it's actually really easy, especially compared to like the truck or anything like that, because the spark plugs are just right here in a row. You just pop them off, take them out, put a new one in. Should be pretty straightforward. Pretty easy. Got them out of the boat. Let me show you what the trailer looks like. This right here doesn't look that bad, except, I mean, it is completely rotten through everywhere. And you can see the daylight through here. This is just nothing there. I mean, these are the tires I made at home from Houston on. I mean, it's just fantastic. One good thing about this, as I learned, is that this these trailers are really low. And so when I get my new trailer, I'm going to go ahead and put... Uh, 15 or 16 inch wheels and tires on it a little bit more expensive uh, but they fit the standard four and a half by five bolt pattern and they'll give me the ground clearance i need to uh, back into my driveway because you can see there's some scarring there but i mean just just going along here like like this is mostly surface rust but um if you get down under here you can see those middle pieces they're all just eaten away and and that's pretty much all of them Thankfully, these boats are, are really kind of flat bottom. I mean, there is a little bit of an angle here, but uh, especially in the back, you know, you can basically just build a flat rail and it'll sit on the flat rail. And maybe it won't be ideal, but it, it's not too big of a deal to do that. Um, and so that's probably what we're going to do because the other trailer's designed as a flat rail. It just has those flat pieces back there. Uh, and they run the whole length of the trailer so it'll just sit up under here I think just fine and then this trailer has this front bow guide the other one has these pieces that come up forward I think I'm gonna have to chop them off and build something like that but up here you can see this is where the trailer jack is and this used to be vertical and when I was trying to unload it I mean it just bent the whole thing there the guy was like, oh, I filled them up with slime for you, and, and that's how I arrived here the other day. So I think I literally made it home on just slime. They have surge brakes, but the surge brakes have rotten, rotted off uh, on one side entirely. On the other side, they still sort of work. And if I bring you down here, uh, you can see where I bent that, pulling it into the driveway, because it sits really, really low. So after maybe two hours of pretty solid industrious labor, as you can see, 
We've got the back seats out. Got all the uh, front cushion and the step through seat out. Uh, the captain's seat's not getting recovered. It's fine, but I took it out because the uh, rails were all rusted, so I need to replace those. And we got this behemoth out, which is a huge pain in the ass. So now I can call my uh, my upholstery guy, and I think I'm just going to pay and have him do it. I originally considered maybe just doing skins and then reinstalling everything myself, but he wanted about <clears throat> four, <coughs> $400 in materials, about 600 in labor, 1000 bucks total, redo all of the pieces you see here, the front, and not including the... Uh, engine cover so because the engine cover is in pretty good shape we're just going to clean it up it'll be all right um so i'm gonna give him a call and see if i can maybe drop this stuff off tomorrow because i'm guessing it'll probably take him at least a week to get all this stuff done i don't know how industrious he is but in the meantime we still got to figure out um the starter issue that i thought i fixed it looks to be fairly intermittent uh, if i jump it with like a screwdriver it starts every time which means that there's a secondary relay that, that goes to the starter uh, that powers 12 volts of the solenoid. It's pretty rusty, so uh, in the next episode you're going to see me take all that stuff apart and replace it. I'm pretty sure that's a GM part, and so it should be pretty simple to replace. And while we got everything apart, we're going to give this boat a nice thorough cleaning. We're going to take care of a lot of the electronics and stuff like that. So, a lot of irons in the fire, but uh, I think we're about done for tonight. Just got to clean everything up and uh, put it all away. Anyway, I'm super excited. Uh, I'm just a little tired and a little sick, but uh, stay tuned. There's going to be part two of uh, this. I don't know what it's going to include, but it's going to be some good stuff. And uh, hopefully we can get on the water here pretty soon because it's, uh, it's uh, late March here and, and boating season's really basically around the corner. April, everybody's already on the lake. So I uh, need to, need to get, get my ass in gear and get the stuff done. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Uh, make sure you follow me on Instagram at MaxWorks, Facebook, backslash MaxWorks. Keep your eyeballs on my face balls. And uh, you can see pictures of stuff like this uh, way before it comes out on video. Thanks for watching. Peace.